this morning to share uh, about my project that is supported by the Chancellor's Chair. Um, a, a real honor, honestly, to be to be um, supported in this way to do some exciting work in the Department of Nursing. Um, so this morning I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the project titled Co-Designing a Transition to Professional Practice Nursing Course. And I'm excited to be talking this morning um, to some non-nurses because uh, the background slide is a little more exciting when speaking to uh, speaking outside of maybe the echo chamber that sometimes is is the nursing profession. Uh, the nursing profession knows um, really well the challenges uh, of transitioning from a nursing student to practicing nurse. Um, and uh, so sometimes uh, illuminating this issue uh, to other folks is, is particularly exciting. So this project really um, is coming from the issue of that professional practice transition that nurses need to make when they are going from, you know, the world of student nurse where there's lots of focus on safe learning environments and being able to make mistakes and challenge ideas um, in a way that is, is safe and hopefully preparing them for the future. But knowing that sometimes this isn't a, an easy landing for all students when they do start to, uh, start working as, as a nurse, uh, uh, wherever, wherever they end up employed. And so uh, this challenge is, this transition can be quite challenging for, for, for our new graduate nurses. And uh, well documented in the literature how challenging this can be for particularly some. And more recently, um, as, as many of you are probably aware, we experienced a, a global pandemic. There was unprecedented, uh, unprecedented amounts of, of burden placed on the healthcare system and um, the nursing profession in, um, was you know not not unaffected and so uh, lots of uh, lots of issues of burnout recruitment and retention issues in in the in the profession um which trickles down to to our students and so our students were were graduating into a context that was that was more complex see if it wasn't complex before um it was more complex um staff were burnt out uh the the staff that were usually there to train them that had years and years of expertise uh have, would were pulled in many different directions whether they're you know in new management roles or or taking on you know bigger and bigger portfolios uh to really help help uh with the pandemic effort and so uh there was this pre-existing challenging transition and then there was these additional contextual complexities that that really created a, a a challenging challenging time for our new graduate nurses entering the profession and so a need for support was really recognized and um there was uh, supportive uh, measures in place often to ease or smooth the transition uh for new graduate nurses but these often took place in the in the postgraduate setting. So employers may be recognizing that their their unit or their their area of work had you know specific needs for their their new graduates would put in you know perhaps a longer orientation period or some targeted some targeted training for their specific grads. But it created a real patchwork of of support for new graduate nurses. Some some really still had very little very little by ways of you know facilitating this this smooth transition that we hope for our students. So looking a little more upstream, uh, myself and a couple of colleagues started thinking about how can we in uh, the nursing department be supporting the transition while students are still um, still in their undergraduate education. And so how can we be looking at particularly our upper use, year students um, and and laying some of the foundational work for them to have a smooth transition moving forward. And so this is really the context in which um, this project, this project is nested. And so what we are aiming to do and supported by the Chancellor's Chair is to design a transition to professional practice nursing course and evaluate this course um, in, in a pilot offering. Um, and excitingly uh, I think is the is the method by which we're going to design the course and we're going to use a co-design method with students and with some of our practice partner stakeholders in the community to really help 
one, identify the specific needs of our students in that transition to practice period um, and the needs of our practice partners. Many of our, our students do go on to be employed in the Niagara region, so we really want to be meeting the needs of our, of our practice partners as well. And so this is this is the the aim of the project, and we're going to go about this in a couple of unique ways. And the one other exciting kind of piece is that Brock um, Nursing has been undergoing a, a major modification of our curriculum. And as chair of the curriculum committee, this this the chancellor's chair and this project all kind of seem to come into place at a really unique time where we were actually relooking at um, relooking at our curriculum and designing things that would would support our students better. Um, and um, so this this course really nests quite well into um, our new fourth year uh, curriculum. So by way of a bit of an overview, um, like I mentioned, this uh, we are using an experience-based co-design method to develop the course. And so um, this co-design um, works really in three phases. You do some pre-design work where you start to gather the information that you might need to set the project up for success. And so what that looks like in, in our in our project is really gathering what we know as far as the current experience of our students. So what what already exists in the curriculum, uh, how are our students supported, um, how are the ideas of transition or some of the the pressure points that students experience in the transition process. How are they taught? Are they talked about? Or do we address these in any way currently? You know, not wanting to fully reinvent the wheel or or um, you know eliminate any of the really good things that we're already doing as well as trying to understand what is maybe happening um, at other institutions. Are there other evidence-based um, evidence based curriculum interventions, curriculum um, programming that is supporting students in this way? And so we're really gathering this experience in the pre-design phase and then moving into the co-design where we really want to understand uh, what the experience is. So presenting back some of that gathering of the experience and then designing from that understanding of the experience experience what a course could look like that's going to support students, that's going to help facilitate that smooth transition and also meet the needs of our practice partners so that they feel like the students that they are hiring from, from Brock Nursing are more successful in this transition period. Really helps with their recruitment and retention efforts, which is a big, uh, continues to be a big issue for, for many, um, many hospitals, uh, uh, community health providers um, and places, really most places that hire nurses. And then finally, we'll uh, move into the post-design phase. So once the, the course is developed, uh, we'll do a, a pilot a pilot running of the course, collect some data on how the course itself can actually um, indicate uh, lead to the outcomes of preparedness and practice readiness, and and then move into some, some refinement and, and before the course actually does get uh, nested into the uh, undergraduate curriculum. So currently, uh, we are in that pre-design phase. Um, we have a, established a project steering committee um, that is inclusive of myself, um, another nursing faculty who, uh, whose program of research focuses on uh, kind of the new graduate nurse and the recruitment and retention post-graduation. Um, uh, I have a wonderful RA and a fourth year, uh, one of our current fourth year BS um, CN students who is um, going to, on this small team, bringing that student perspective. Um, and then very soon as we move into the co-design phase, we'll be adding members to this um, student committee that will be inclusive of those practice partners as well as a few more of our undergraduate nursing students. And so our main project currently is we're um, uh, at the kind of moving into the the data collection phase for a scoping review that's going to inform again that experience of what um, of what interventions or what programming may be um, in the literature currently that we can build in to our current uh, uh, co-design. And so um, I, I consider these the ingredients. So what ingredients might be out there that our co-designers can choose from as they start to design this course? Is it is it more mentorship models? Is it simulation um, based training? Is is there what are these ingredients that um, are being implemented in nursing curriculum? Elsewhere? where that can help inform our co-design. 
And then early spring, um, we'll be uh, starting a cross-sectional survey that's going to elicit some of those support needs, um, both from the student perspective and from our practice partners perspective. And then um, we've also uh, at the same time been looking at our current curriculum, that curricular review of what's currently in the Brock BSM program that's supporting uh, this transition. And so outputs for year one. So this project started uh, last July. So we do we have the establishment of the steering committee. Um, the scoping review protocol is within days <laughs> being submitted to uh, JBI uh, evidence synthesis uh, for publication. Uh, we will be presenting this project at the Canadian uh, Association of Schools and Nursing Conference in May. Um, we have a match of minds application to support um, the survey development and the hiring of another RA to really spearhead that project and um, this summary of our current curricular content or curricular elements uh, is kind of our, our year one output and where we're hoping to be as we move into that co-design phase in um, in the second yeah the second year of this project. So I hope that um, provides a good overview of, of where we've where we've kind of been in the last year and I'm really excited to to be continuing forward with this project as it as it rolls along and to really support um, support our PSN students as they do make that make that tricky transition to professional practice. I'd love to hear anyone's thoughts reflections.